16th time. Is there any chance of getting any service round here? Is there anybody there? Nothing. I mean, have you not managed to get any service? Well, they've not managed to get any service either. <laughs> it must be in a meeting. What? Sing them a song. <laughs> Do you think that's likely to get us some service? Oh, give it a go if you like. Oh, a song. When the day was, and a little tiny boy with the hey ho, the wind and the rain. A foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it raineth every day. When the hey ho, the wind and the rain, the rain it raineth every day. When the hey ho, the wind and the rain, the rain it raineth every day. Hey, I won't do you. Thank you, oh, very kind of you. Still nothing. Oh dear, oh dear. I can't be wondering who I'm talking to, aren't you? No. Oh. My lord and master. My employer, yeah. yeah. The boss, the gaffer. King Leo, ruler of Britain. Right here. Yeah. Well, that's what it was at one time. Yeah. Not anymore. No, we haven't been ruler of Britain for a good long while now. God love him. Do you know, it really does, it really does make my heart, breaks my heart to see him like this, but he's only got himself to blame. You know, if, if he'd only let his brain do the thinking, instead of his ego. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's still standing there by you on the stream. You never guess what he's doing. <laughs> no, he isn't doing that as a matter of fact. <laughs> That's at the moment anyway. So what do you think it is that he's doing? What do you think that it is that's giving my lord and master his occupational delights? What do you think is bringing him immense pleasure at this moment in time? Uh, no, he's not conducting affairs of state. Oh, and he's not signing important documents. He's not even signing unimportant documents. So what do you think it is that he's doing? Oh, tell us, tell us, Jono, I hear you all cry. Tell us what is the king doing? Tell us what is the king doing? Tell us what is the king doing? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> it's nice to have company. <laughs> I'll tell you what he's doing. He's making daisy chains. The king is making daisy chains. I must think he's a two-year-old again. Between you and me, I think he's beginning to lose the plot. As if he's not lost it already. There's his friends. What's more, I think he knows it, you know. He has said to me, let me not be mad. Sweet heaven, not mad. I would not be mad. Keep me in temper. I would not be mad. You know, he has said that to me. Oh, bless him. Oh, but he has only got himself to blame, like I said. If only he's let his brain do the thinking and not his ego, things could have turned out really differently. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that is different. That is different. <laughs> it suits you. He's only been and going to put a bird's nest on it on his own now, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he took the eggs out first. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. You have to laugh though, don't you? Don't you, Eddie? You have to laugh though, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, Eddie's my Marot, aren't you, Eddie? Yeah. Eddie the Marot. Yeah. It's French, you know. Yeah. No, not Eddie. Marot. Marot. <laughs> Marot. Yes, well, I'm. I have to keep him amused. I have to humour him. That's my job, you see. Humour him. Keep him entertained. Keeping him amused. That's what us fools do. Yeah, well, I'm a fool. Yes, I have had the honour to be King Lee's fool now for, ooh, a good many years. I'm not sure for how much longer, though. 
Might be looking for a new job anytime soon. Oh, yeah. But you know, if you'd known the king in his day, you'd have seen a far different man. Oh, you would. Oh, oh, I know you'd have seen a younger man. Well, each and every one of us has to get a little bit older every day. I myself am no spring chicken. I know this will come as a shock to you, but I'll never see 50 again. <laughs> You'll never think of it, I'll never see 60 again for that matter. <laughs> or 70. In fact, I'm only one off the big 8 0. And as for His Majesty, oh. <laughs> by the look of him, he'd be catching up with Methuselah. <laughs> yeah, oh, bird's nest on his head. You're a barn pot, that's what you are. Barn pot. <laughs> the, stem, the trouble with him was he wanted his cake and he wanted to eat it as well. I'll tell you how it all began if you like to know. Oh, you would? Yeah. Oh, it's just as well. I'll huh? <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, now then, where shall I begin? He wants to think of it. Thank you. Right, okay. Well, I will go begin. Um, um, I shall start off by introducing you to the players in this tragic tale of woe, the characters, the dramatis personae. Yes, uh, ye, ye, um, ye cast. Number one, King Lear, ruler of Britain. Yeah, and all the other bits and pieces that dangle around the edges of it. That's what he was at one time. Oh, bad rulers, rulers go. Oh, no, we could have done a lot worse. We could have done uh, well, a lot, lot worse, yeah. He's kept the country on a very even keel for a long, long time. Oh, there'd been no major wars or anything like that. A few minor skirmishes over something or nothing, but he soon sorted them out. And he brought up three lasses, but no lads. No, and there's no chance of any more offspring either. His missus departed a while ago. She should be there by now. You see the thing, if that's been the problem really. Not that his missus departed. The fact that he's not had a lad. Well, you see, if he'd had a lad, he'd have had a son and heir. He could have passed the crown on to a son and heir. But you know, with three lasses, it's not going to be that easy, is it? You know, he said to me, he said to me many a time, oh, John. I'm fed up right up to here with this king and lad. It's no fun anymore. Yeah. If I'd only got a lad, I'd jack it in tomorrow. Yeah, that's what he has said, you see. Yeah. But I mean, I'm only the fool, aren't I? When all said and done, I can't do an awful lot, though, can I? Well, you mind you, the thing is, I mean, I mean, I was thinking to myself only earlier on, I was thinking, if anything should happen to him, that's me out of a job, isn't it? And uh, well, they're hard to come by these jobs. I mean, I mean, oh, what's this here? Ye old times and ye very old times. Oh, situation's vacant. That was handy, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh, reliable fool wanted. Must be able to lighten unfriendly atmospheres and bring harmony to disagreeable situations and calm the proceedings down. Apply to the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> hey, that's a challenge, isn't it, eh? Oh, here's another. Versatile fool wanted. Must be able to turn somersaults, perform backflips, and do cartwheels. They can forget that for a start. Oh, no, 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 no. My, uh, my talents lie not in the physical agendas, but in the areas of wit and drollery. I'm at my very best with the off-the-cuff jest, the, um, the bon motte, the plus grande riposte. I, I'll give you for instance. We, we have in front of us a gang of yachts, otherwise known as the Barons. And they're all falling out and squabbling among themselves, argy-bargying, and it's looking like it might come to fisticuffs any time soon. So what are you going to do, John? Oh, you know that, wondering. No, I'm not going to run like the clappers. I should go up to that band of ruffians, I was going to say to them. Come on now, you chaps, come you chaps. Own up now, admit it. Who is it that's just farted? <laughs> yeah, gets a big laugh every time, isn't it? And it usually does. 
<laughs> but you see, the thing is, if they're laughing, they're not fighting, are they? And I've done my job for the next time. But I wouldn't be a proper fool if I didn't skate on thin ice now and again, would I? I've come very close to a severe beating many times with my present employer. I've gotten one, all for simply telling the king where he's going wrong. In, in a jocular way, of course. But he's not always welcome. Ooh. In fact, he very rarely is welcome. Vanity, you see. Yes, vanity. You all think they're so perfect, don't they? Vanity. Is you like that with your lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah, vanity. <laughs> That's what it is, vanity. The downfall of many good men is vanity. In fact, it's partly through vanity we've ended up in this coffee certain place. Oh, God love him, though. Mm. I wish I could do something to help him. Oh, I was telling you the story, wasn't I? Yes. I digressed. Now then, uh, yes, King Lear, the rubric. He's, he's the main character in our story, right? Um, then we come to King Lear's daughters. Uh, the eldest one is Goral, then we've got Regan, and the youngest is Cordelia. Oh, I'll tell you what, that Goneril, that handful she is, I'll tell you. Oh, Ooh. she's vicious, she's treacherous, she's jealous, she's murderous, and she's quite a few other Russies as well. <laughs> Not to mention lecherous. Oh yes, yes. She like trying to be to put on the naughty side where the chaps are concerned. Is our goneril? Yes. Oh, she likes a toy boys, doesn't she, Eddie? She likes a toy boys, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. No, goneril likes a toy boys. Yeah, that's right. Bit of a yes man, aren't you? He knows everything. And then, okay, she's married to the Duke of Albany. Now. He's not a bad old stick, he's not. Um, but he's a bit weak-willed where she's concerned. Very much under her thumb, to get my drift. Oh, he's had that much M-pecking off her, they've nicknamed him Corn. Do you get it? M-pecking, Corn. He's what's known as a jolly jest. Laughter's optional, isn't it? Please feel free if you wish to. Yes, um, he, he nicknamed him Corn. Then we come to the next sister down, Regan, she's as bad as the older sister. Right, bag of affluent she is. Oh, yeah. Yes, and she's married to the Duke of Cornwall, and he's as bad as her. But they're, they're a good pair, they're well matched, they are. And the, between the three of them, her and her older sister, the things they've got up to, did you respect a Billy? Oh, the cruelty and things they've done. Oh, tell you. Tell you. Yeah, but. Um, They'll get the just desserts. You mark my words. They'll get their just desserts. I do not predict a long and happy life for any of them. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't. Yes, you know what the thing... The thing they did, the things they've done... Well, I beg your belief. The old lost. They were having this kind of argument. It was a discussion to start with, and it ended up as an argument. And it was about what the king and the so they were saying this, and the, new, the other philosopher was saying that. And Regan pipes up. Hung him instantly. Yeah, just like that. Hung him instantly. But Gondor was a bit more thoughtful. And she said, pluck out his eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding you. No word of a lie until it did. She said, pluck out his eyes. And do you know that's what they did? Oh. The poor old Earl of Gloucester had his eyes plucked out. I'm not telling you a word of a lie. Oh, I tell you, them two. Them two. Good. The sin sisters, I call them. They could out gargle any gargle any day. <laughs> Honestly, women. Oh, present company accepted, of course. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sure each and every one of you is delightful, delectable, not to mention delovely. In every way. I myself, I'm very fond of women. Yes, and um, <laughs> I've had my moments with the ladies. I'm you, Eddie. Eddie, I've had my moments with the ladies, haven't I? Eddie, I've had my moments with the ladies. I'll see to you later. I'll have you know I did have a true love. For a song. 
I did have a true love, I thought the world of she, and what her she asked for, and gave it willingly. She had a fruit, a passion, as I will tell you now, but when she got her pleasure, I truly know not how. But I thought she loved me, but sometimes I had doubt, because she always wanted fruit whenever I took her out. I gave my love a cherry as she went passing by. I gave my love a cherry and she spit the pip in my eye. <laughs> I then gave her another. I must have been a prat. Because when I gave her the other, she did the same with that. <laughs> but I thought she loved me, but sometimes I had doubt. Because she always wanted through who, but how I took her out. I gave my love an apple, the nicest on the tree. I gave my love an apple and she squashed it on my knee. <laughs> I gave my love an orange, yeah, it was so very sweet. I gave my love an orange and she squashed that on my feet. But I thought she loved me, but sometimes I had doubt, because she always wanted fruit whenever I took her out. I gave my love a strawberry, and they cost me very dear. I gave my love a strawberry, shoved it down my ear. I gave my love a lemon, and that cost me half a groat. I gave my love a lemon, and she pushed it down my throat. But I thought she loved me, but sometimes I had doubt. Because she always wanted fruit whenever I took her out. I gave my love a passion fruit. I thought with this I'd win. I gave my love a passion fruit. She loved it at my chin. I gave my love a banana. That cost a tidy sum. I gave my love a banana and she wrapped it round my thumb. <laughs> And I thought she loved me, but sometimes I had doubt, because she always wanted fruit whenever I took her out. I gave my love an appointment with a shrink someone suggested, but my love was just not remotely interested. <laughs> and just when I thought that we were getting closer, she told me that her father was the prosperous greengrocer. But I thought she loved me, but sometimes I had doubt, because she always wanted fruit whenever I took her out. I thought, well, uh, what can I give her that won't backfire on me? I thought, give her a pet to love, and then she might love me. I gave my love a tiger, which was an enormous cat. It made her muddy head off, and that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> that is what's known as a little light relief. <laughs> it's very light and very little. Where were we up to? Where were we up to? Right, oh, we're coming now to... Uh, the next sister, Cordelia. Oh, proper sweetie is our Cordelia. Oh, she's lovely, yeah. And the apple of her father's eye. Well, she was at one time, but oh, things haven't gone too well for our Cordelia. Well, uh, they haven't, they haven't. And <clears throat> well, I'll tell you more about that later. But different kettle of fish to her sister, she is. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> them two, they're not fit to lace up her sandals, no. But they, as I say, things haven't gone too well for her. At the time, she wasn't married, but there were a couple of fellows who were after her hand in marriage. Plus her arms and legs, of course. <laughs> not to mention her other bits and pieces. <laughs> yes, but, um, you know, I've, I've always had a soft spot for the cordy. I, really... I often wondered, I often wondered, did she have a spot for, spot, soft spot for me? She'd probably say, I got no chance, wouldn't she? Sure, Tate! <laughs> oh, no, 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 well. Anyway, there we are. Now then, next we come to, who do we come to next? We come to the Earl of Gloucester next. And I mentioned the Earl of Gloucester earlier on. Oh, lovely old boy was the Earl of Gloucester. Mind you, he'd been a rum old cove in his time. And he had a way a with the ladies. Mm, and he way aid one a bit too often. And ended up with offspring on the wrong side of the blanket. Edmund. Edmund. What a red letter day that was. Edmund, I don't think. Turned out to be a right SH1 T did Edmund, I tell you. Oh, the trouble he's caused his father, that Edmund. And his brother, born on the right side of the blanket, that's Edgar. Beggar's belief, it really does. Oh, that Edmund, he's a, he's, treach he's a treacherous one as well. And he causes trouble wherever he goes. And, and, and them, I tell you, them Gloucesters, 
between the, between a lot of them that are sad, they're all on their own, I tell you. Then, oh, we come now to the Duke of Kent. Diamond Geezer, the Duke of Kent. Oh, yes, Diamond Geezer. I'm very loyal to the king. Truth they can, truth then. Even when the chips were down. So that's uh, that's basically the, 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 the performers, the cast. Ye cast, ye dramatis personae. There were a few other bits and pieces, but uh, they were the main players in this sorry tale of woe. Um, so now we come to the main event. The gathering. Do you gather? Yeah. Do you gather? Yeah. You will do in a minute. I didn't as a matter of fact. Gather that is. No, 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 no. Um, I was lurking in the background. Yes. Yeah. It's sometimes better to lurk in the background, isn't it? Have any of you ever lurked in the background? Yeah. Oh, have you? Oh. Won't ask any further question. <laughs> oh, well, you see, I, I knew what it was all about, though. All the king had told me, you see, it was all about, all about what he was going to do with his kingdom. Oh, he come to a decision about it. Oh, yes. And those who were all instructed to foregather, including his his daughters, three daughters, and their husbands, the ones that had husbands, and the various dukes and earls and all that kind of thing, they were all instructed to foregather. In fact, there was a lot more than foregathering, foregathering. It's a play on words, you see. It's known as wit. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, they were all there, you see. So, anyway, the king king's told me in advance what's going to, what is going to happen. He wants me to sort of, well, he wants me to look in the background, doesn't he, like I told you. Observe what's going on. Report back to him, you see. We're like that, isn't it? Really, really, really are. So, the first thing that happens is we have a blast on the trumpets. King likes blasts on the trumpets. Yes. Oh, he does, yes. And then he makes his big entrance, yes. Oh, he likes that as well, making big entrances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he begins to address the crowd. I've got it written down what he said. You know, because I thought I might forget it. Because he comes out with some funny words. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, um, we shall now express our darker purpose. Give me the map there. Now this here map, what he required, was an enormous one of the kingdom. Yeah, it's an enormous map. And upon the command of the king, he has two of his servants lay down upon the ground. No, not his servants lay down upon the ground. The map, the map. Honestly. Yeah. Now then, uh, <coughs> the king continues. Know that we have divided in three our kingdom, and tis our fast intent to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on younger strengths, while we on birth and crawl toward death. I ask you, on birth and crawl toward death. What's it like? It's the idea of a joke, you see. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's his sense of humour, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, um, so uh, what, 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 what he wants next is for each of his daughters to stand up and in turn declare to the whole gathering and to him, how much they love him. Oh yeah, that's what he wants. Vanity again, you see. What I tell you, vanity rearing his ugly head. He wants them to declare how much they love their father. And the one who he comes out best will get the best chunk of land. He said, I tell you, it's terrible. But look, that Gonnell and Regan, oh, they don't half give him some twaddle, I tell you. Oh, flattery and flannel, they are. Gonnell's first, right. Then she, she kicks off with them. Um, <laughs> so, I love you more than words can win the matter. A dearer than eyesight, space and liberty. Beyond what can be valued, rich or rare. No less than life, with grace, health, beauty, honour. As much as child uh, loved, or father found. A love that makes breath poor and speech unable. Beyond all manner of so much. I love you. <laughs> uh, oh, but the king loves this, doesn't he? Oh, 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 oh. He's delighted. 
grinning like a Cheshire cat he is. Well, anyway, he points out on the map the land that she's won. That, <coughs> you see, he divided it equally, made sure that they had all got forests and rivers and streams. <coughs> he only bought vineyards, of course. So she'd won a big chunk. Right, now then, I don't know what Regan's going to do now, but anyway, up pops Regan. Mm. She's got a, gl a glossy smile on her face, hasn't she? <laughs> and she says, um, Sir, I am made of the self same metal that my sister is, and prize me at her worth. In my true heart, I find she names my very deed of love, only she comes too short. I thought to myself, she's a lot more than too short, will they? <laughs> yes, uh, she comes too short. I profess myself an enemy to all other joys which the most precious square of sense possesses, and I find that I am alone felicitate in your dear highness love. No word of a lie, that's what she said. Oh, 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 oh that's just play, right up his street, that in there. Oh, yeah, hey, hello, me. Shows a big chunk that she's got now with all the flattery and all the flannel and all that twaddle. Oh, vanity, vanity. Anyway, now it turns to Cordelia, his youngest. Now our joy, although last not least, to whose young love the vines of France and the milk of Burgundy strive to be interest. That was the two fellows of France, you see. The King of France and the Lord of Burgundy. Yeah, they're both fancy men. Yeah, I, I know, that's the way he talks. He say, he couldn't come out and say, could he? The vines of France and the milk of Burgundy. He made that but it was that anyway. Yeah, they, they weren't there at the time, though. They were, they were in the wings, so to speak. They weren't privileged to all this. Um, so um, then he says to her, What can you say to draw a third more opulent than your sisters? Speak. And what did she say? Nothing. Yes, no, no she did say something. No, no, she didn't say something. What she said was nothing. The nothing, the something that she said was not, no, nothing was the something, nothing was the something that she said. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And he looks at her and he kind of smiles and he says, nothing? Yeah, but once again he did say something, didn't he? And the something he said was nothing. It wasn't, he did say nothing, yeah. Nothing was he said. Only it was a kind of a question, you see. Nothing? And she kind of smiles at him and the darts of the way and says, Nothing. Now, once again, she did say something. But the something that she said was, Oh, I'm not going to all that well again. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, he's not happy about this, is he? Ooh, he's not happy. He's not what he's wanting, is he? Not the flannel that he's desired, is it? No. Nothing will come of nothing. Speak again. You see, he's really got this naughty thing on the brain now, hasn't he? But what does Cordelia? Well, Cordelia does not give him the flattery and flannel that he wants. She says, Happy that I am, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. I love your majesty according to my bond, no more, no less. To which he replies, How, how, Cordelia, mend your speech a little, lest it might mar your fortune. And Cordelia, she really spells it out. Good my lord, you have begot me, bred me, loved me. I return those duties back as I right fit. Obey you, love you, and most honour you. Uh, why have my sister's husbands, if they say they love you all? Happily, when I shall wed, that lord whose hand must take my plight shall carry half my love. Yes, carry half my care, half my duty with him. Sure, I shall never marry like my sisters, to love my father all. Now, I don't know about you, but I was thinking to myself, pretty decent little speech that one got in there. You know, you might have been thinking to yourself, well, fair dues, you know, I mean, that would have placated him. Yeah. And you'd have been thinking to yourself, well, that would have made him sort of seem reasonable. If you were thinking that, you'd be quite wrong. Oh, he's not happy. No, 
not a happy bunny at all. He's not okay. No, 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 no. He's, he's silent at first. Always a bad thing, that, isn't it? Silence. Anyway, when he breaks his silence, he comes back at him with a right load of mad ass verbiage and sanctimonious stuff. Oh, and he, when he gets his teeth into something, he doesn't half get his teeth into it, I'll tell you. Oh, what did he do? He swears by the sacred radiance of the sun. He goes on about propinquity and property of blood and barbarous sidions. Then he went on about the mysteries of equity and the night. Then he talks about the operation of the orbs. Well, at this point, he lost me completely. I don't know about you, but that's it. Anyway, um, Cordelia doesn't book, doesn't. There's a bunch, six to a bunch, he'd say, given the flash from family once, doesn't he? So, he tells her, she's well and truly what she did on her chips. She's now persona non grata in his kingdom. He don't want her no more. No, no, he don't want her anymore. Finish with her. She's no daughter of his anymore. Vanity, is he? Anyway, then my lord of Kent, the Duke of Kent, he comes up, doesn't he? And he challenges the king, uh, uh, and the king uh, listens to him right enough. And then he says to him, Come not between the dragon and his wrath. But my lord of Kent has another go at the king and tells me, What thou doest is a foul disease. Ooh. King doesn't like that. No, 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 no. Hand on his sword, isn't it? I thought it was all like, There's going to be bloodshed here if we're not careful. But my lord of Kent, he still doesn't give up, does he? He finishes up by saying to the king, I tell thee, thou dost evil. That's it, isn't it? That's it. King tells him, hop in. Don't want anything to do with you anymore. Skedaddle. You're not welcome either. Sling your hook. But he gives him five days to clear his desk and be gone. So... The Duke of Kent, he's gave his farewell to the king, and he said a few kind words to Cordelia, and a few not so kind to Regan and Goneril, says to her to his mates, and heads for the border. Ah, ah, but a bit later on, it, he does come back into the store, you see, oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, I'm jumping ahead now, i Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. I never asked you, did I? Yeah. I didn't ask him, did I? Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. Thank you very much. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Yeah. That's what we call a little bit of audience participation. <laughs> we like to see you get value for money. 